Like, yep. it's not. It was just. I just. Okay, here's my my thoughts about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. And it's been a couple weeks, and we are very, very, very excited to be back. Um, yeah, looks like I have to share it on the Facebook page afterwards. So, welcome back. As always, here we are, Zero Dark Nerdy, the galaxy's okayest pop culture podcast, brought to you by the impeccable, <clears throat> the incredible Sailfish Comics, three amazing locations across North Carolina, one in Concord, one in Winston-Salem, and one right here in Greensboro, North Carolina, right across from Best Buy. Be sure to hit them up for all your comic book, action figure, and graphic novel needs. Of course, a gigantic shout out to the newly renovated Brassfield Cinemas, now known as Golden Ticket Cinemas. Be sure to check them out. It brings back that old school feeling, especially for those of us that were here for the uh, Brassfield Cinema days back when that shopping center was just completely wrecking shop with hams, Blockbuster Video, Pizza Hut. Ah. Oh. God, the Pizza Hut buffet. Something we need to talk about on one of our upcoming episodes. And don't forget, we have plenty of trivia and music bingo nights throughout the entire triad. Just go to our uh, our website, popculturepodcast.com. Click on the event page, and you can see when and where that we are doing our music bingos as well as our trivia nights. So this is a live stream for those of you watching and for those of you that will be listening once we air this. Uh, Spoilers will be ahead. We're going to be talking about primarily Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice part deux. But we're also going to start off with, uh, you know, some shows that we're just kind of catching up on. A lot of people ask my daughter and I, what are you guys watching? What's going on? This, that, any other. So um, we're going to get into that. Real quick before we go on to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and uh, most importantly, I do want to give um, not just so much shout outs, but we've lost some some great people recently. Um, one one of my uh, good friends, one, one of the best managers that I ever worked for, Kenny Yoder, um, unfortunately passed on a few weeks ago. So, you know, just want to send some love and prayers out to him and his family uh, our, my, one of my very first friends, one of my best friends here in, in Greensboro, North Carolina, Bo Woods, Erlene Woods has, uh, uh, unfortunately passed on. So for those of you that know Bo and his family, you know, just please send some shout outs their way and, and nothing but prayers and, and good vibes. And, uh, our good friend, Marty, uh, been a bartender for us since the old clubhouse days. Uh, not not clubhouse. I'm sorry. Players, players days. He's now our main bartender at Breakers. His his dad just passed on. So um, you know, again, it's uh, it's tough at the end of the day. But this is where we can all come together, support each other, love one another. So um, you know, be sure to if you if you knew these people at all whatsoever, you know, just to reach out and uh, you know send some love and prayers their way. So. Um, in terms of TV shows, by the way, this is Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, <laughs> and I'm joined with... Jordan. <laughs> no a.k.a. today? No. I, if you guys have an a.k.a. for me, that would be a.k.a. for me. Comment below. What what should it be? We should do a poll, because I don't know. Ooh. I've never I like yeah. that. What should Jordan's a.k.a. be moving forward? We are going to start a poll, but you know you got to have some already on hand, yeah, so people can vote. So I like okay, that. I'll, I like that I'll a come lot. Come up with like four, and then people vote. <laughs> I like that a lot. So yes, vote for Jordan's AKA moving forward. Stay Whoever soon. wins gets to join us on the show, get some free swag. Yeah. Big shout out to Peter Day, uh, who is in charge uh, in charge of all of our t shirts and uh hoodies and tank tops and everything else we were gonna have a fall line coming up here soon actually before we head back up to new york city for comic-con so can't wait for that so jordan before we get into beetlejuice beetlejuice in terms of streaming tv all that fun stuff what what do you got going on right now um 
so I've been watching three shows. Okay. Uh, which is like the most shows I've ever watched in a long time. I'm usually a rewatcher of my comfort shows, comedy uh-huh. series, and stuff. But you may get. I started one. watching. Yeah, I started watching uh, Agent Carter. Okay. With my girlfriend. Uh, it's like it's pretty good. It actually yeah. the Rotten Tomatoes score is pretty high. I want to say it was like in the 80s or 90s. Yeah. Um, it's She's pretty good. Going to be one of the yeah one of the few. Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I love I love Agent Carter, and I wish we could like got to see more of her, and I hope maybe we do. I don't know. We got but... a little sneak peek in um. Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse yeah. of Madness. And it was, she looks so cool. I hope yeah. they bring her back. Yeah. Um, yep. But that show's pretty good. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're good. Keep going. Um, what else? I've been watching. I started Blue Eye Samurai finally. Woo! Um, I think I'm only three episodes in, uh, but it's really, really, really good. I really like it so far. Um. Yeah, just like the really likable characters and then really unlikable characters and the combat is so cool and the main character is just, you know, I want to be her. So I... I... Hey, that could be your next cosplay. Yeah, (laughs) we'll see. (laughs) And then finally, my like favorite show right now, embarrassingly enough and unexpected of me enough, is The Crown. Um. I just start, I like a lot of the actresses in it. Mm-hmm. Like, my favorite, like, some of my favorite white women are in it, like Helena Bonham <laughs> Carter and Olivia Colman. Oh, I didn't Coleman. know she was in that. Well, she's going to be in the next season I'm watching. But yeah, it's like as they age, the actors change. So. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, and the girl who plays Princess Margaret right now is going to be the blonde girl in Fantastic Four. I don't remember what, what is her, Sue? <sighs> yeah, Sue Storm. Is the character, Sue? Mm-hmm. She's going to be Sue Storm. And it's just, yeah, I don't want to get into it too much. It's embarrassing. But like, There's nothing wrong with that. A the, lot of like, people the like drama. The I like the drama. I know, but, you know, Queen Elizabeth's problematic. Well, they're all problematic, but I guess that's part of the. I thought you were going to say show. something like Paradise Island or some shit like that. <laughs> no. It's, it's just, it's good. The crown is really good. Uh, you know, whether. It's it, they tell it's fictional. Obviously, a lot of it's fictionalized. Like you can't. There, there wasn't a documentary crew following around Queen Elizabeth, but uh, it's really good acting, really good writing, um, and it's just good like gossip. Like it's like a drama. Just I'm just in it for the drama. <laughs> like the I mean, royal, the I, royalty. I think that's why we're in it for half drama. the shows that we watch. Yeah, I could start a whole podcast for that show right now. I thought of a name for it. Oh, what are you going to call it? Royal tea. Royal <laughs> tea. Tea. The royal nice. tea. Nice, 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 nice. So Excellent. Other um, people like it. <laughs> so before I get to mine, I do want to talk about it real quick. It just came out today. So this episode will air for those of you listening to us on the uh, audio platforms out there, the, all the podcast platforms. We appreciate it. We love you. Uh, we're We're doing a lot more on YouTube now. So the last few episodes have not made it onto our podcast, but uh, be sure to follow us on our YouTube page, Zero Dark Nerdy. The Thunderbolts trailer came out today. Yep. So Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad. This was only supposed to be a teaser, and teaser trailers are normally like a minute, minute and a half long tops. This felt like a full-blown movie trailer. What were your first thoughts after I sent it over to you this morning as soon as I saw it? Um... Yeah, teaser trailer. See, every episode I'm on, we talk about trailers, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but like now the teasers are just like minute and a half trailers instead of two and a half minute trailers. I'm right. Like, anyway, anyway, anyways. Yeah. It looks good. It looks really good. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm not scared that it's gonna be bad, which is good because the MCU, you know, we're just now getting back into like getting good movies again and you know yeah i mean right now the slate for next year uh captain america brave new world we get to see red hulk um and then this is going to follow that up right after and then it's going to go into fantastic four so 
It looks like, mm-hmm. and I mean, we we expected a a slight slump. I think the slump has been a little bit worse than than predicted after Infinity War or um, after Endgame, really. But um, you know, we had a couple a couple hits there, especially with Spider Man, and and then it just kind of went went up and down after that, more down than up, I guess you could say. Yeah. Of course, Deadpool, Wolverine, crushing it, highest grossing R rated movie of all time. When the first Deadpool came out, I already predicted that that was going to be one of the highest grossing R rated movies of all time. Then Joker came out. And, you know, here we are. And now, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is still a rumor. They're supposed to be doing a uh, Wolverine versus Hulk movie based on the comic line. So we'll see. I thought see. it wasn't it, a rumor as of today. It looked like it's. It looks like it, but you just, you just never know. You just never know. So just like Ryan Reynolds, just like Deadpool says in Deadpool and Wolverine, they're going to they're going to hang on to Hugh Jackman until he's 90. Like he literally yeah. may be literally old man Logan when this I is so. all done and over with, which I will take all day, every day. Um, but yeah, Thunderbolts looks awesome. MCU's pretty much version of Suicide Squad. And I think what excites me the most, too, is Ghost as well as Taskmaster, I don't think really like got the love that they were supposed to get Yeah, in both of their films. So I'm glad to Ghost see Ghost cool. back. Ghost is great. Taskmaster is awesome. Um, it's good to see uh, Agent... Ah, goodness gracious. I always forget his... Yeah, um... I, I, can't, I can't remember his name. Uh, but, you know, the son <laughs> of... Oh, here we go. This is, this is why we look stuff up. U.S. Agent. US, US agent. agent, US agent back. And then, of course, um, Julia Luis Dreyfus as kind of the mastermind double agent between Hydra and everything else. It just looks good. Uh, you know, some people were complaining about the accents, uh, the accents from uh, Florence Pugh and uh, in Harbor. But I'm like, come on. Like, I, th- I think it's what? I think it's good. I mean, you know, people they were good you, in you Black Widow. It, yeah. But you can't make everybody happy. So it's good to see White Widow and everything, uh, you know, come out of this. And, of course, Sebastian Stan coming back as as a Winter Soldier cannot wait. I, I love the scene where he pulled his arm out of the dishwasher and then put it on. I didn't yeah. know it was dishwasher safe. Right. So fun fact out there, Winter Soldier's arm is dishwasher safe. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let, let's get to it. We got to go see this with the family uh, during your birthday weekend, big shout outs to B, Janet, Janice, Adam, Kyle, uh, Mariah, Javier, and of course, uh, you know, our good friends, Matthew and Jadon. We all went to Golden Ticket Cinemas to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. So, Jordan, just kind of give us your your overall reaction, you know, take away from, from the film. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't love it. Unfortunately, I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't, it was not by any means the worst thing ever. I mean, it could have gone a lot worse, mm-hmm. but I, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, I'll be honest. I wasn't too convinced before seeing the movie either. I was, you know, I was just trying to stay like not too, um, overexcited or hopeful and not, you know, not automatically you know diss on it i don't know i I, it it could have been so much worse but it just as far as sequels go it's just not gonna be anywhere in like a top 10 or 20 for me (laughs) it's just it's very you know i mean they tried to redo the first one and i get that i get that because the first one is so good and so nostalgic and like a cult classic iconic Mm -hmm. but i guess the the downside to trying to redo something like that anytime or the risk is you know it's just not as good like it's really hard to live up to especially so many years apart too yeah and so they try and i appreciate them trying but yeah that's my initial and i'll get into some details and stuff too but yeah i, I mean i, I, I agree know. with you is this a fantastic sequel no it, is it watchable sure um you know i'm 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 glad to have seen it in theaters i, yeah. I you know i feel like even if i didn't i would have definitely watched it as soon as it comes on hbo and i might rewatch it again i i like to do a second watch 
on films that I've seen in theaters, especially something like this, which is a staple in the Hernandez household. You know, big ups to mm-hmm. my uh, my mom and dad. Uh, you know, uh, for those of you that maybe new fans or that have been following this show from day one, know that I'm a. You know, this is a pop culture family. Movies, music, entertainment. Uh, we go and watch movies all the time, and and Beetlejuice stayed on rotation at our house. I mean, it's one of those things where if it's on TV, you, you're going to watch yeah. it. This one, it's one of those where I am going to rewatch it and just kind of depending on that, I'm giving it a little bit of hope on rewatchability, but at the same time, I'm not. Uh, I just felt that a lot of, they, they try to intertwine so many storylines yeah. into one. And they didn't mm-hmm. have to. And that's they the thing. They didn't have to. They could have picked one or two, but, you know, there's the storyline with Lydia and her douchebag producer husband. And then there's the dad and all his stuff. And then the daughter. And it it was just, it just seemed like a lot. Then the daughter that finds, you know, we already mentioned spoilers ahead, that has the crush, that also has a backstory. It was just all these Mm -hmm. storylines intertwined and it just got i don't even want to say confusing it was just you 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 didn't have time to focus really on any particular characters except for michael keaton which don't get me wrong the performances i felt were great you know everybody the the acting the actresses Mm -hmm. were fantastic even justin thoreau you know he played that douchey producer role very very well um the performances are great but you know it definitely dragged the first half of the movie really really drags once Mm -hmm. we get to you know the underworld death it does start picking up a little bit and of course it gives those vibes from the first film um but you know the the last song at the end and even though none of us knew at, at least us as kids I don't know who the hell, I didn't know who Harry Belafonte was. I didn't know Dayo. I didn't know these songs, you know, but you watch the movie and they pick these songs that we all grew up with and are great. I already forgot the song that was like the musical musical piece of the final act of the film. And it was, it was just that bad. And I just don't know where the decision-making came in on that. Um, I think the song is called MacArthur Park. Yeah, it's like, just I'm it's lost, a very though. forgettable song. And honestly, it was one of those movies that should have ended about 20 minutes earlier. But there was they were still trying to tie up. Oh, and I didn't even mention the storyline between Beetlejuice and his ex-wife. Like it, it was like six different it, it was it was almost was like so watching unneeded. a bad Yeah, it was almost like watching a bad reality TV show. Like, there was no point in her being there. Because even, no. like, they didn't do anything with her. Like, she no. didn't, need, she didn't like, move the plot, plot along much at all. Nope. And then, spoiler, like, they just kill her off very easily at mm-hmm. the end. Like, yep. it's not, it was just, oh, I just, okay, here's my, my thoughts about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. So, they should have. I feel like maybe instead of a sequel, they should have done a prequel to this movie about Beetlejuice, like his backstory. I would love that. that would have been awesome. Like, because we got some backstory in this movie, but it was very little. It was just the fact that he was a grave, a uh, grave rob, a grave digger, a grave mm-hmm. a robber, and that he had an ex-wife who wanted to kill him, and that's all we learned about his backstory. That's it. And that's like such a missed opportunity. Like, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like that's my idea or my. I feel like they should have done a prequel, and that would have been really cool to focus in on like Beetlejuice, like how he became Beetlejuice, mm-hmm. and maybe having, like the it's worth it's worth seeing it to see Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder like as their characters again. Yeah, but you could have done that in a prequel. If somehow if they could figure out a way to incorporate Winona Ryder in that, I think that would have been really cool. Like something about, you know, their fate or destined to meet each other. So I don't know. Agreed. I just, yeah. Like, like you said, they just introduced a lot of subplots that just, they didn't need to be there. No. Uh, 
or they, they just weren't developed enough. I mean, they didn't have time when you have that many subplots going on. You don't have time to like yeah. make it nice most of the time. Um, yeah. I mean, even um, old girl from Wednesday, you know, she, she was good, yeah. but I mean her story and it was just like, you know, hates her mom, hates her mom, hates her mom. We don't really know why. Then we then we kind of find out why. And then it's like, you know, they end up talking to the grandma. And it's like, you two need each other. And then run into the dad. And that whole thing, that, that, another, another side story. It was like, yeah. so they tried There's to fit. I think they tried to fit 30 years of Beetlejuice into an hour and 49 minute movie is what they did. They were like, here's what's happened from the last time we saw Beetlejuice until now that's like trying to fit in the entire lord of the rings trilogy into a into two hours yeah yeah and that's the thing the more i think about it i'm like and then there's that story and then this story and then that story it just makes me upset because it's just again it just feels like a wasted opportunity a little bit yeah i feel like if they were if they're gonna introduce this many stories they should have just done a tv show out of it and yeah, then done it, done it season, yeah, done it season by season, and do it the right way. It it was just yeah. a lot to swallow up, and in about two hours, maybe a little bit more than two hours. I don't remember the runtime, but I don't think it was super long. Uh, yeah. But again, Keaton always great as Beetlejuice. You know, if they could figure out something like like you said, I think a prequel would be fantastic, and especially if Tim Burton writes it. I don't know how much of the stuff that he does, he actually writes. Like, we all know he wrote, not directed, Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm pretty sure he wrote the first Beetlejuice as well as directed it. This one, I noticed during the credits, it was not written by him at all. Um, Even the screenplay. So, I think that might have something. He didn't write the first movie either. Okay. All right. So, Michael McDowell and Larry. Oh, okay. wait. That's a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Michael so, McDowell I mean, and Warren Possibly. Green. And I think it was just so wild. And especially for that time. I mean, we were talking about the 90s, which, you know, everything coming from the 80s, everything was a little bit wild, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, not, not a terrible film. Not a great film. Is it watchable? Like yeah. I said, when it comes on streaming flat, platforms, check it out. It's still a good movie night. If you love the, the the characters from the first one, you're still going to enjoy it. Just know you're going to have a whole lot of storylines bombarded at you. So, you know, get some popcorn out and, uh, you know, maybe some edibles and just let the night take you away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, it's, awesome. it's a lot to take on. Yeah. And I will hit on a point that T.T. Yanni made that I did not know before, but this could have also been, this, I would, like, I almost want to, not that I am qualified or have an ex- enough experience to write a blockbuster movie, but, like, uh, yeah. I just almost want to, I almost want to do it for fun, just to see what I come up with, just because, like, well, also, the the plot being centered around the funeral of, the, what's right. the dad's name? Uh Jeffrey, what's his real name? Jeffrey Jones, yeah. whatever his character's name is. The plot being centered around that, that's another like, I don't know why did you go with why did you go with that as like the right the backbone of the movie? Just just A, plot wise, and then B, like I also learned that he was like a child predator. Or Yeah. Yeah. So why like why are we I mean I Maybe that that's why they like killed him off. I like that, like right. <laughs> killing him, right? But and the fact that they they know they well, he showed him, but of course he couldn't be like, "Can you come back on for the Beetlejuice two movie?" He shouldn't have shown him at all or made him the the backbone of the movie. Like I don't, not yeah. the backbone I'll say, but like the you know where the plot kind of revolves around it. So uh, he was another. Yeah. Like I just and I never cared you don't really care about that character in the first one. No. Yeah. And they they kind of tried to make you care about him in the second one about a little bit about his death, you know, because it upsets uh Catherine O'Hara and Catherine mm. O'Hara's great. But I just I don't know, a lot of like questions I have about Definitely. some of the choices made for the movie. But I mean 
It was, yeah, I, I would watch it. I don't think you need to run to the theaters right now to catch yeah. it if you haven't seen it yet. But I need to rewatch it. Like I said, have the Catherine O'Hara, Winona Ryder, Michael Keaton are really great. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Keaton's still really funny. Oh, can we can we talk about yeah. Bob real quick though? Yeah, Bob, the unsung hero of the whole entire film. Yeah. So for those of you who don't remember, the shrunken head guys from Beetlejuice one. Beetlejuice has like an army of them working for him, like doing like receptionist stuff, this, that, and the other. But he's got his main guy, his main number one, his name Bob. Bob was it's definitely like, a highlight. Yeah, it's his minions. Like if he was Guru, yes. that's his minion. <laughs> See, yeah. they could have done a prequel all about him and Bob. Like yeah. that would have been awesome. Oh my gosh. If they were to bring back the cartoon series and just have it Beetlejuice and Bob's. And and all that. Oh, I'm, is that how I'm, it was? Sign me up. No, no, no. I mean, because I love the Beetlejuice oh. cartoon series, but I don't remember Bob being in it. So I don't remember. I don't know anything about the. Cartoon. Yeah. So what's uh what's your what's your rating on the film? Um, two and a half. Okay. Okay. All right. Not bad. Not bad. I don't have I don't have a half one. So yeah. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I'm going to go too, just because like mm -hmm. when I did laugh, I hate a forced laugh. Um, and I felt like when I, and, and again, the performances were great. The movie just had so much going on with all these different storylines. It was very hard to focus on anything. But, uh, you know, there was, I wouldn't say there was one scene with Beetlejuice where, um, and this I don't want to ruin. Yeah, because I already I, know what you're scene, talking about. Yeah, and I don't want to ruin this. It was the one time I, like, really laughed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he does have one scene where it's just like, boom, like, this is Beetle. Like, that That to me, I was like, this is, like, Beetlejuice yeah. part one right here. You exactly. know, where, where, like, especially, like, in Beetlejuice one where he gets I mean, distracted. Spoil, like, it's spoilers. Everybody knows. Well, no, no, no. But I, I, I want to save that one, though. Because, you know, in Beetlejuice 1, there's all these little scenes and takeaways, like, you know, where where he has the spikes. And, you know, when they try to pick him up. And then there's the escort house. You know, just things like that yeah. that are just, like, it's funny. More risque. It, it's a little bit more risque, funny. where this one was definitely a little bit more PG. And I felt he yeah. was more PG in it. And I felt like they were going for a PG rating than PG-13. Where I'm not saying the first one is a hard PG-13, it but it was definitely PG-13. Where this one, I was like, are they trying to get this to be on Disney and have it be a, like a Beetlejuice PG? So, yeah. you know, it would have been great to see more of, of him. Like I said, he's great, and I'm not knocking any of the performances. We all know so much goes into films, and we are not here to trash films by any means. But we are going to call them as we see them. We're going to point out the highlights, point out the lowlights. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm glad I got to see it in theaters. You know, am I going to rush back to the theaters to go see it? No. Um, am I yeah. going to watch it when it hits a streaming platform? Me and, and a few of my edible green friends will probably do that. And I'll probably <laughs> love it. You know, maybe yeah. on a second take. <laughs> um, so uh, at the end of the day, it was good to see him go back. I would have liked to have seen. And I mean, I know that there's situations, obviously, that, that led to not bringing back gina davis well not so much gina davis but alec baldwin oh, yeah. and what he's going on and uh you know things like that but you know another cool cameo was danny devito being down in the uh in the underworld so i mean there there is like some cool stuff there of course a lot of easter eggs for the first film um but yeah i just if they do another one which i believe they will i mean it still did well in theaters just because you and i didn't like it doesn't mean that people didn't go see it right so it still made money. So if they do a Beetlejuice 3, I just hope they focus on like one or two stories and just stick to it and not just really honestly try. I, I, I mean, now that I think about it, it really feels like they try to catch us up on 30 years of Beetlejuice in two hours. Yeah. And it just, you know, it just didn't give enough time. And a lot of the characters we really like, the dad, the daughter, everything else, it's just... We didn't have time to get to know any of them. Yeah. Let's see who wrote Beetlejuice 2. So while you're looking that up, 
in terms of uh, what's coming out next month, really what's coming out the rest of the year, Jordan, what are you excited to go see in theaters? Oh, wait, you go first. I got to think about this. <laughs> you go first. Um, so I didn't see the first Smile movie in theaters. Oh, this me neither. I, I haven't this, seen it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's entertaining. Um, I'm definitely going to go check that one out. So Smile's one I, I want to see. You know, right now, um, you know, I definitely want to finish Monsters as far as TV goes. Penguin, episode one, I was hooked within the first 10 minutes. Colin Farrell is such a just dynamic actor. And, I mean, you can't even tell that's him between the makeup and the accent mm-hmm. and everything. Like, yeah. if he doesn't win an Emmy for this, I don't know what's wrong out there. Like, he should have at least been nominated for best supporting actor. I don't know if he was, but he should have at least been nominated for best supporting actor when the Batman came out. And according to Matt Reeves, this is going to be a nice little segue to the Batman two, which I cannot wait. Um, Of course we got Joker coming out next month. This one, I got to say, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as the first and not that I don't like musicals. Big shout out to my wife, Ashley. She <laughs> loves musicals. But to go from what they did on the first one and then apparently kind of go this musical route on the next one is going to be an interesting take. Um, yeah. Let's see, let's see if they can pull it off. You know, I'm not knocking it yet. Um, Phillips is a great director. Of course, Joaquin, you know, I mean, Lady Gaga. I mean, a- amazing cast, but. Yeah. I'm hoping they don't go too far in the left field with this, with, with the whole musical aspect of it. Comic book wise, not really too much um, that I'm looking forward to, unfortunately. You know, of course, we know uh, MCU, Deadpool and Wolverine was pretty much the only one. It was the only one to come out for the MCU this year. So, uh, but Moana too. Moana too. Super excited mm-hmm. for that coming out Christmas. And then, uh, you know, so I'm going to go back to back with The Rock. I'm going to go Moana 2 and then Red 1 with The Rock, Chris Evans, and, uh, of course, J.K. Simmons, one of my favorite actors out there. Way before Whiplash, I remember seeing him in Oz back in the day on HBO where he played. It's funny, you see this guy who plays this Nazi on this HBO show and does all these just amazing characters throughout his career. But that's how I first first knew him, and he's just such a talent. And uh, can't wait. And apparently our very own Michael Torek um, is, you know, is in the film. He's hoping his scenes are not cut out. We never know until the final cut. So a big shout out to our boy Michael Torek. We are going to be talking about his short film, uh, which will be coming out later this year. My daughter was a PA on it. I was an extra in it. I'm hoping my dramatic scene, my Oscar worthy scene wasn't cut out. So we'll see what happens, but a uh, big shout outs to our boy, Michael Torek out there doing the damn thing in the, uh, in the cinema universe as always. So that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's what I got. Yep. And then, um, yeah. So what do you got going on for, for the rest of the year? Um, let's see. I'm looking at a list now. Venom. I'm excited for just have it looks like for fun. That. Venom, like, Venom's been dumb fun. Since you guys the first need one. to chill about, you know, it's not going to be a cinematic, like, masterpiece. It's yeah. just fun. It's dumb <laughs> and I fun. love Tom Hardy. Oh, of course. And not the trailer look, the trailer has made me laugh. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful it will, the movie. We are Venom. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I'm um, excited for Venom. Hmm. I'm excited for the wild robot. I know oh, I just know yeah. it's gonna make me cry. It's got the she it's got the same vibe as like Big Hero Six with mm-hmm. like Baymax. Mm-hmm. I just know it's gonna make me cry. And apparently the book series is outstanding. I've heard, yeah. Um I wanna I still need to see Transformers one. I've yes. heard nothing but good things about it so far. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for that. And I want to read the comics I got on Free Comic Book Day. It was a new Transformers release, and I don't remember what exactly it's called, but I've heard really good things about that too. Void Rivals. Um, maybe it was. It was. I don't remember, but so there's a new. I want to check out. 
Big shout outs to Sailfish Comics. There's Void Rivals, uh, which is kind of G.I. Joe and Transformers. And then there's a new line of Transformers comics that just came out. So on Wednesdays, be sure to hit up our boys over at, well, not just Wednesdays. Anytime you're over by Best Buy in Greensboro or in Winston-Salem or Concord, go by there. These guys are super educated in their comic book knowledge. If you're just, whether if you're an expert comic book collector or you're brand new to it, you want to learn what to read. You know, in terms of comic books, I super love, um, gosh, why can't I think of it right now? Beneath the Trees is the uh, short ver- uh, short version of it, which is kind of like Dexter meets Winnie the Pooh. Uh, of course, Something is Killing the Children, still going strong. Mm-hmm. They are finally, I know the script's done. I don't think they have cast the Netflix show yet for Something is Killing the Children. And I'm telling y'all, when this show comes out, we're going to go back to episodes like this and many episodes before where we've been on the train, and this ain't no hype train. This, if they do it right, will be the next Walking Dead slash Game of Thrones. So can't wait for that, because I think what they're going to do is they're going to take something that's killing the children, and they're going to do House of Slaughter and intertwine them. Or they may not, Mm -hmm. and then they'll just do something that's killing the children, and then they'll do House of Slaughter Maybe they'll do like a... Like a how they did haunting of Hill House and they did haunting of Bly Manor. Maybe we'll do yep. something like that. Yep. That so super cool. duper duper excited about that. Oh, I have one. Y two K. Oh yes. That's a yes, December yes, release. Yes. 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 Y two K. Jonah Twitter Hill. So we have this on our website. Be sure to go to our website, popculturepodcast dot com. If you go to our news, you you can see a trailer for Y two K. So it's pretty much this meets the end, um, meets maximum overdrive. So machines, like it's 1999, it's New Year's Eve, ball drops, everybody's going crazy, and then machines start taking over. So it looks super fun. That's one where I I feel like in the theater, um, you know, might have to bring just a couple of our friends from, from Glass City over there just to uh enjoy what's going on so <laughs> yeah um i think that's really it i thought i had one more but i can't remember i think that's yeah, that's, that's a it. good that's a good list comics i don't i don't really um i'm always just getting random stuff i'm reading blade runner 2019 right now and i'm almost done with that oh nice and so that's really good. If you like Blade Runner or like cyberpunk or any of that kind of stuff, Blade Runner, there's 2019 and I think I, the next series is 2029. And then I don't know if it skips to 2049 or whatever. So, but they'll, they'll be coming out with that HBO show next year, right? Or I believe with so. um, Michelle Yeoh and Hunter Schaefer. And so I'll mm-hmm. definitely be excited to watch that. Too, yeah comic is. book wise uh, i mentioned this before on a few posts uh, we will start doing a entertainment variant comic book section on the website as well as live streams i am a gigantic fan as you can tell of m- movies music and entertainment and you know whether if you know or don't know there are a lot of comic books that have been coming out but have also been on the past marvel did a gigantic release uh, probably like eight or 10 years ago of Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, but they were all, all the covers were based on hip hop, uh, hip hop albums. Grave Diggers being one of them. That's actually the Howling Wolves of, I can't remember, but either way, Wu-Tang has one. There's a ton out there. Be sure to start collecting them. You see them because they're now back in popularity. They're actually more expensive now than when I first started collecting them. But they're also doing movie covers. Um, so, yeah, a lot of movie covers, TV show covers, and album covers that are turning into hip-hop covers, especially Run the Jewels, RTJ. So I just got a bunch from Whatnot as well as on eBay. So that's gonna I'm going to do an unboxing video for that. And like I said, we're going to do an entire Facebook page segment on all things variant comic book covers. So, you know, again, even if you're not into it for the story or this, that, and the other, I'm, I'm more of a collector of the covers you know, comic book wise for the story, I love almost anything James Tinian. Um, nice House on the Lake wrapped up a while ago. Now there's Nice House. Oh gosh, I don't want to ruin it. 
but he has a new series which is kind of a sequel to nice house on the lake which is uh some apocalyptic independence day alien type of stuff um but of course you know his his big claim to fame right now besides department of truth which is another very very popular one that i just haven't gotten into yet is something is killing the children as well as uh house of slaughter so definitely be sure to check that out and be sure to go buy sailfish comics for all of your comic book and graphic novel needs so thank you so much for joining us on our live stream and listening to us on the podcast. As always, any recommendations, any show ideas, we've been doing this for six years, y'all. You know, sometimes even I and Jordan run out of ideas. Anything you'd like us like for us to cover, always feel free to reach out. You can reach us on the website. Again, popculturepodcast.com. Go to the contact us form. Big ups to our good friends over at Zibster. That is Z-I-B-S-T-E-R dot com. They are responsible for our very beautiful and very easy to use and update website. They are here in Greensboro, but they do websites all over the world. Zibster dot com. Of course, our website, popculturepodcast.com. And again, big shout outs to our sponsors, everyone else on the Zero Dark Nerdy crew, and most importantly, you, our fans, for Keeping us going, you know, there's there's days where it's it's tough, but uh, you know, I love doing this. This is my 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 five to nine. I got my nine to five, but being able to enjoy this with my daughter is fantastic as well. So it keeps it all going wild, and that way I can pass it down to her one day so you don't have to listen to my old ass. So uh again, thank you for joining us. And we will thank see you, you next time. Peace. <laughs>